non-surgical, is that the same procedure that the orthopedic surgeon would do, putting the under and manipulating? No, definitely not. What's the difference if you're not using any machine, or you're just pretty much manipulating it to... It's a really good question. It's an excellent question. In that procedure, first of all, we're talking about, it's called MUA, MUA manipulation under anesthetic. Um, they're actually not doing it almost at all anymore because there's been so much damage to the shoulder castle. They've torn up so many shoulders, somewhat, some of them permanently, or some of them requiring surgery afterwards. Where they've ripped and torn the capsule of the shoulder and uh, the tendons and so on and so forth. And the reason that those complications have occurred and the reason that they don't really, they frown upon doing that now and they don't really do it so much anymore is because of the fact that the patient is totally and completely it, um, unconscious. And so the patient doesn't isn't able to give any feedback whatsoever and they're just lying on the table and they just literally take it in various ro rotational move positions and hope that they don't tear up any of the good tissue along with the bad tissue. So how with the trigenics, with the, with the Oloos and trigenics uh, frozen shoulder recovery procedure, the OAT procedure, the patient's awake. Um, they can decide for themselves if they even want to have anesthetic. So you may not need, you may not want, you may elect not to have anesthetic. If you do have anesthetic, there are complications even of anesthetic injections, of which the doctor that does the injections would forewarn you, and you would be aware of that, as we will forewarn you of potential complications with this. However, that being said, we haven't had any occur that are recorded. So what we're doing, essentially, is um, um, we're using the trigenics principles uh, of interactive patient participation during the procedure. Uh, because of the fact that you're awake, you're able to actually interact with me as I do and perform a specific, three specific types of manipulations. The actual operation itself, and we could, could classify this as a non-surgical operation by the medical def dictionary definition of the terms of the word operation. The operation itself actually consists of three procedures, and those three procedures are all, one is to designed to uh, to remove the, or separate the adhesions for lifting the arm up above your head. One is designed to uh, separate the adhesions that restrict uh, external rotation. And one is designed to be able, for you to be able to put your arm behind your back, internal rotation. The three actual procedures in the entire OAT, uh, OAT procedure operation, um, you'll be actually uh, moving and, con and contracting and moving against resistance, heavy resistance, in certain specific directions that I will instruct you in and teach you how to do. And you have to move in exactly that way and no other way, because that's the safe angle or the safe way. And uh, at the same time that you're doing that and we're kind of causing your brain almost to somewhat shut down the muscles that are uh, overloaded, Due to this con type of contraction, which is the which is what happens uh, when the nerve sensors uh, are, are sort of bombarded, uh, then there will come a point where the muscles that would normally be in spasm, as we are attempting to, you know, move the shoulder into its normal range of motion, not abnormal range of motion, they would kind of shut down a little bit, and that gives me a window of opportunity to actually perform. The, the manipulation itself, which is, um, even if you do get anesthetic, whether you do or don't get anesthetic, there's still pain involved. It won't be totally, it won't be totally painless. Extremely painful. If you're moving it where I can't move it right now. It can be extremely painful for a number of seconds only, not minutes, not hours, a few, some really few seconds more than that. It's, it's, the pain itself is only, you know. It's really in in less certainly less than a minute, and sometimes it only matters a few seconds, really. Basically, you're manipulating it, but you're saying you are manipulating it in the angles that you know work, as opposed to a surgeon who's just moving it all over the place. So it's basically the same type of treatment. No, it's right? not the same at all. In one in one case, you're completely unconscious. Right. So it makes it an entirely different animal. There's no nerve sensors operating when you're unconscious. None of the nerve signals that we're trying to stimulate can op can work when the person's unconscious. They have no feedback, there's no reflexes going on, nothing, you know, no reflex neurological activity of the kind of which we're trying to generate when we do this procedure. We're trying to, we're attempting to generate neurological reflex activity in the muscle to cause the brain to 
change the way that it controls the contraction of the muscle that would normally be going into spasm as uh, we attempt to go into a, a range of motion that would be particularly painful, for Sounds instance. Very painful. <laughs> like, well, if I, my, if I happen to just yeah. move it Have you had children? Yes. It's this like is worse than it, no. Labor, it, it, it's doing. like having uh, it's like having a baby for a few seconds. Okay. That's what How I long was your labor? Long, long, How long? Like twenty something hours. Okay, so tw you had that for twenty. Seconds. It's like it's like the pain you had during your labor for a few seconds. Just a few seconds. A few seconds. Like a, like a shot. <laughs> Less than a minute. For you know with each of the procedures in the entire operation, basically. Which could be how many? Three. Three. So it's like, ow, and then move to the next one, and then, ow. <laughs> uh, oh, after the pain, is it just going? Uh, no, you'll still have some uh, pain, usually. Uh, some people do. The next day, they're great, and there's hardly any pain at all, and they're waving their arms around. But worse than this? Or? Uh, yeah, I've seen worse than that. Um, now, although that one's pretty bad. If I actually test you, the reality of that one is not the way you're lifting it. If I hold your shoulder down, yeah, if I, yeah, you're cheating. Mm -hmm. If I actually do it, if I actually do it, okay, and I don't allow you to move your shoulder, okay, mm -hmm. if I don't allow you to move your shoulder, okay, I'm going to keep this here. Like, I'll keep this one here. This is no shoulder movement. There's no elevation of the shoulder. The only thing that's turning is here. Without elevating, no, oh hold on. Without elevating this, that's you. Ow. That's it. You feel it? Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> go higher than that. So that's pretty close to a grade ten. Oh, that's a pretty bad one. Let me see this one. And it got worse. And worse. Okay. Here's this, and here's this. Do you see? Yeah. Okay. You don't even want to do that. Okay. Turn around. Turn around. Turn right around. Here's this. And here's, here's that. That's it. I don't even want to try to force no. it because you're going to scream and I'll jump and hit the roof. <laughs> okay? That. Now, that being said, you're a good candidate for this procedure from the looks of it. I need to see your x rays. And I have to decide if I'm going to accept the case or not. Yeah, so. I brought my stuff. I just. Yeah. I basically today wanted to know what, what it entitled. I have a plant medicine orthopedic surgeon on Monday. Well, they can do surgery on it. I don't want surgery. But it's yeah. not, uh, it's not uh, always successful, and sometimes it can worsen it. The pain is extreme. I almost can't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. just, um, either more <coughs> drugs or just let it take its course. Yeah, but that being said, some of them resolve in 18 months mm -hmm. to two years, and others come in to see me, and they've had it for three years, five years, six wow. years, and ten years. Wow. Where it didn't resolve. So they don't all resolve. No way. No. <coughs> they don't all resolve. And if you leave it not moving for too long, then the joint inside itself will, will deteriorate. Um, I try to, like I do my workouts and I'm trying to move it in. Yeah, but, but it's not moving inside the cap inside the no. joint capsule, okay? So what happens is after 72 hours of joint immobility, enzymes are released into this synovial fluid of the joint causing breakdown of the actual joint itself and so osteoarthritic deteriorative changes occur with complete immobility of a joint. That's why when they do knee surgery, reconstructive, they used to put them in a cast, they don't do that anymore. Now they put them in a little machine in the bed that keeps the knee moving constantly. Okay. Even spinal surgery, they get them up and walking right away. They don't put them in the back casts anymore because this, this, this whole spines would deteriorate, the joints would deteriorate. So uh, the longer you leave it immobile, the more potential permanent damage down the road as well. Even though it may come back, it may not be as back, back as good as it was before. Anyway, do you have any other questions about the actual procedure itself? <coughs> we do what? take breaks between the actual procedures. We may not just do sort of, you know, whack, and whack, whack. How many have you done? Like a I'm, lot? Yeah, probably, I've been doing it for 10 years, probably, uh, you can probably see about at least 20 or 30 on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I've probably done in the hundreds. I don't know how many, but now, in the what hundreds. Is the, what is percentage of success? So far? Yeah. 100%. 100% of every person you've ever done. Some, the worst case scenarios, um, and it may very well be in your case as well, because yours is quite severe, 
that we don't get all of the external rotation because I'm I'm a little hesitant to for instance with manipulation on anesthetic they would just go yeah. I'm hesitant to take it into that range because it can cause some damage so with the really bad cases um, if that doesn't separate easily we'll just I'll separate some of it and then I'll leave the rest of it for the patient to work on themselves and over the next the worst case scenario is three months. Within three months, it comes back by itself. Because basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm separating one part of the capsule. And once I've started the separation, it's like, like a tearing a paper. You know, Now there's, it's weaker. And, and if you keep moving that tear or that, in that line, then it will continue. And it'll, it'll, it's, it, we, we've started the process of opening it, and then it will follow through. So the worst case scenario is that you'll have still have pain for a few days afterwards, you have to take some painkillers. You have to do exercises every hour on the hour for three days. And even in sleeping, you have to wake yourself up every two hours when you're waking up anyway, wow. so for the first three days so it doesn't start to stick back together again. And then after that, you still have to do exercises daily. And the patients, now some patients will have to go on a rehab program here. Most will fly in and fly out one, you know, the next day, the same day, or a couple of days later, and then they'll just either do the exercises at home themselves or go back to their physiotherapist or chiropractor to get some rehab on the muscles that haven't been used for so long that they've started to atrophy and deteriorate and so on and so forth. So basically that, that's basically it. So the worst case scenario is, yeah, uh, like 80% within a week and, you know, with the remaining 20% maybe taking one to three months. Okay, that's the movement. Now what about the pain? The pain dissipates with the movement improvement as the movement but not comes back. Like as I get my movement back? Like Some people do. Some people have the instant, almost instant pain relief. But the next day, they're, they're, they've got their arm up, as I said. The next day, or day two, they've got, and lots of them are on the video. Yeah, and they're moving their arm around, and they're yeah. not, they're in hardly any pain at all. So I'm not going to give you any guarantees, but if you're like one of those patients, then you'll be fine. You know, within two, within the next day, to two days to three days, you're in great shape. You're moving around. A week later, you're swinging your arm around and you're doing everything you need to do, or even day, the next day. Uh, I, I mean, I don't want anybody babying their arm. Afterwards, I tell them to do everything. I have them doing push-ups almost immediately, yeah, like the same day. Well, no, but I, I'll have you do a push-up immediately, the same wow. day. That'll be part of the exercises you have to do. You'll be doing push-ups right away. Yeah, so, so the point is, yeah, um, you know, but not everybody's the same, and some are more difficult. If you've got diabetes, it's a different story. They take longer. The type 2 diabetics are not as bad as the type 1. The type 1 diabetics are the worst. They have a different type of consistency to the tissue. It doesn't separate as easily. It's kind of more rubbery almost, if you will, or something. And it's, um, it takes, it, they're the most difficult. Then it, the degree of the freezing, you've got like a, you know, from from what I just saw there, it's basically a grade 10. It's about as bad as it gets. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look like you're lifting your arm when you do that, but you're really not. Your whole shoulder is moving with it. It's actually cheating. And when I did it, we had the real range of motion, which is way down there. So you've got, you know, you don't have much range there. So you've got a good, it's, it's a severe one. You've got a severe frozen shoulder, yeah. Severe. So. So now you, you think that it would never come back? No. I've never had one come back in 10 years. Not one. When I talk to you about the price, you're going to have to consider how much it would cost you to go to physiotherapy or chiropractic right. for the next two years yeah. and be in pain and paying for it because it feels like a torture session for a lot of people every time they go. Exactly. That's why I stopped going last week because I'm like, I'm just being tortured. It's not even a bone issue. It's a, it's a tissue. Mm -hmm. Chiropractor, the adjusting tissue, I don't think that's possible. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not this kind of tissue, yeah. not this type of tissue. This is internal scar tissue in the joint capsule. It's a whole different ballgame than mm -hmm. things that and most chiropractors are ever dealing with. Well, they'll try to deal with it and they'll use various different soft tissue treatments on it. There's one that there's quite popular that they'll use on it's on YouTube and they'll use you know this and that and everything else. But a lot of cases I see, um, if the therapist or the chiropractor is too aggressive and tries too hard, he actually worsens the scar tissue. He, embed, he creates more of a buildup of more scar tissue, and he worsens the frozen shoulder mm -hmm. rather than making it better. So a lot of these, all, all of these therapies are almost useless, and uh, at best they're helpful a little bit for some people. Mm -hmm. But with severe frozen shoulders like yours, I've seen lots of them come back from the therapy having paid for these and being worse than when they started. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so you have to consider when you think of the cost, how much is it going to cost you 
And if you don't go and get therapy, what's your quality of life worth? What's the next two years of your life worth? Is it worth the cost of a TV? Certainly won't be the cost of a house, but anyway. Any other questions at all? Okay.